The Convoluted Life of Gleaming Shield, Level 3 The break room was thankfully empty when Gleaming arrived. Taking advantage of the peace and quiet, she perused the announcement board while sipping at her coffee. There wasn't anything too exciting, a reminder to officers to fill out their paperwork, several ponies requesting time off, and a hopeful of various notifications. Like Corporal Dormat asking ponies to stop taking his lunch from the fridge. Come on guys, it's not funny anymore. The most interesting thing was a blue piece of paper informing the reader about an upcoming cookout for any pony who was interested. It was bring your own drink and a dish to pass, but hay burgers would be provided free of charge. Gleaming didn't even give it a second glance. Satisfied that there weren't any shifts to pick up at the moment, Gleaming took another sip from her coffee as she turned around, only to choke upon seeing another pony standing right behind her. Oh, my Celestia's glowing tits, I didn't even hear her coming in! She sputtered and coughed, trying to clear her airway. As she did so, the mare gave her a concerned look. Are you okay, dear? She asked, her voice silken and soft, barely more than a whisper. Gleaming just wheezed. Frowning, the mare's horn started to glow soft blue. A moment later, a cool, soothing sensation washed through Gleaming's throat. With a gasp, she finally got her cough fit under control. S Sorry, ma'am! She choked out, throwing a half-assed salute. At ease, privates. The mare said. Gleaming lowered her hoof, only to wince as it splashed in something warm. At some point during her fit, she had dropped her coffee. She stared down at the brown puddle sadly, her ears pressed against her helmet. My baby! She lamented. The sound of a throat being cleared softly caused her to look up again, and she finally got a good look at the mare standing before her. She was small, the top of her muscle barely reaching the bottom of Gleaming's chin. Her legs were lanky and awkward, her lithe frame more skeletal than healthy. She looked even more twig-like beneath the heavy plating of her sapphire blue armor. The only part of her that wasn't minuscule in some way was the long, immaculately cared for horn that jetted out of the slot in her helmet. That combined with the light gray coat, the icy blue maid, and the pure silver eyes meant that she could be only one pony. Second in command, so Lieutenant Whiteout. Snapping to attention, Gleaming saluted again, properly this time. Lieutenant, ma'am! Oh, I already said at ease, privates. Whiteout said, not unkindly. She smiled softly and shook her head, but the smile quickly left, replaced with a look of concern as her eyes drifted over Gleaming's face. Are you okay, privates? You don't look well, if you don't mind me saying. She added quickly. You look... I'm fine, ma'am. Gleaming answered quickly. She lowered her huff again, only for it to splash in her coffee. Again. White out peered at her over her muzzle. Forgive me if I don't believe you, privates. You don't exactly appear 100% here. Her eyes flickered down to the coffee puddle for a moment, before returning to Gleaming's face. I I'm, I'm fine, ma'am. Gleaming insisted. Just a little tired, that's all. I didn't get much sleep last night. Her try no sleep at all again, sweet Celestia. Giving the lieutenant her best smile, she tried to look a little less tired than she actually felt. Whiteout wasn't buying it. Privates, answer truthfully. Are you sure that you are mentally able to do your job? There was more worry than anything else in her tone. If Firestorm was the hardcore, abusive father figure of the guard, then Whiteout was definitely the caring, nurturing mother figure. If he needed help or something special taken care of, the lieutenant was always your best bet. She somehow always managed to find coverage for missed shifts, fix mix-ups with the schedule, and correcting missing pay with virtually little difficulty. It was said that she could move the heavens themselves for her guards. They only needed to ask. Gleaming was reminded of all this as Whiteout placed a hoof against her forehead. You need to take a few days off to relax. I can get your shifts covered. Lily Hammer's been asking for some extra hours. Ma'am, no thank you, ma'am. Gleaming said, shaking her head. I'm more than able to do my job, ma'am. Hmm. Whiteout eyed her closely, before sighing. If you are sure, privates, I'll believe you. But please consider taking some time off. This job isn't worth your health, both physical and mental. Thank you, ma'am, but I'll be fine. Gleaming said, only for a yawn to escape her unexpectedly. Her eyes widened and she quickly stifled it. Sorry, sorry, I'm fine. I swear, nothing I haven't dealt with before. It won't happen again. Scrunching up her face, Whiteout opened her mouth, only to suddenly close it again. She peered at Gleaming, as though seeing her for the very first time. There was a calculating look in her silver eyes. Her horn glowed and a clipboard floated in front of her. It would appear... She said slowly, as she looked down the list. That the captain has slaughtered you for throne room duty tonight. Gleaming had a bite her lip to stop herself swearing out loud. The mother bucker, two nights in a row? That never happens, and with no sleep in between, I'm literally not going to make it. Oh, bug. However, 
Whiteout out continued, looking up at her over the top of the clipboard. I highly doubt that you'll be able to stay awake and alert at that particular post. Am I correct? Although she said nothing, the look on Gleaming's face was all the answer the lieutenant needed. Hmm. I thought as much. Whiteout hummed. Normally I'd have to send you home with a derriment, something that's unfortunately you've been getting quite a lot of lately. Gleaming's ears splayed back, and she opened her mouth to protest. But... Whiteout continued, interrupting her. Fortunately for you, I find myself with another shift I need to get covered. One that might be a little more... mentally engaging for you. Gleaming stared at her for a moment before her eyes narrowed. What shift exactly, ma'am? Been quite a long time since we last had this, but I'm certainly not complaining to be back at it. Anywho, let's get on to our very caring donators. Zar630, Peter Coltar, J Tin Man, Darkside Only One Thing, Dash of Evergreen, Taco Cat 598, Maverick, Iron Sky, Badass Waffle, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.